Hello and welcome back to my channel. On today's episode I'll be doing another tech tutorial and this one's on how to make a lead sheet in Sibelius. So I'll be sharing with you exactly how to put in the chords, put in the notes, how to transpose. And on the way I'll be sharing with you some extra special tips on how to make this go the easiest, smoothest way possible with some shortcuts. And in under 10 minutes, by the end of this video, you will be able to make a lead sheet. So stick with me till the end and you're gonna have a beautifully formatted, ready to go lead sheet. So let's get into it. First thing that you wanna do is go ahead and grab your lead sheet, whether that's coming from a real book or a fake book, or if you're going to musicnotes.com, online sheet music, some of those online stores, or you're just Google searching it and finding it online there. So I'm gonna go to Scribed here, and I've already pulled up an example that we're gonna work on today, which is called Our Love Is Here To Stay by George and Ira Gershwin, a favorite. So go ahead and pull that out, pull out your lead sheet as an example, and then um, we're gonna go ahead and open our our program here, Sibelius. So we're gonna go to File, New, and then go to Lead Sheet. It's already selected here. And then we're gonna go to Head Do Portrait. Um, for house style, this is the text. This is the, the font, essentially. And I like to pick something that's gonna be really easy to read. If you hand this piece of music to someone that's never read this piece, You'll want it to be very easy to read and uh, more digestible, clear font. So some of the curvy fonts I would stay away from, I'm just gonna go unchanged. It's gonna go to the default font. It's gonna be in 4-4, that's the time signature. You can go, go ahead and select it there. And then for a pickup upbeat bar, we do need one of those. So we're gonna click that, check, and it's going to be a quarter note, perfect. Um, with the start of the verse, it goes, the more I read the papers, right? So that's gonna be a pickup. And then for tempo text, we do have tempo text here. It's freely. And then metronome mark, you can go ahead and put one there if you would like. For this example, it doesn't have a, a, an actual metronome mark. And then over here for key, we're gonna go to major flat keys. It's gonna be in the key of F. We have some selections here. You can also find minor keys as well as the sharp major keys. And then we're gonna put in the title. Our love is here to stay. Our composer, singer, songwriter is uh, George and Ira Gershwin, right? So you can put it there, George, and you can put the and symbol or you can write it Ira Gershwin. And then the copyright if you'd like to put that in. And I'm gonna hit Create! So I went ahead and downloaded the sheet from Scribed and I have it on the left hand side of my screen and then I have the sheet that I'm working on on the right hand side just so that I can go back and forth really easily and not make mistakes if I'm looking here or I'm looking there. It's all nice and uh, right in front of me. The first thing that we wanna do when we're making a lead sheet is to put in the notes. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to the top tab. The second tab is called Note Input. Click on that. Now go to Input Notes. And you have an external device you, that you're gonna plug in. That's also where you're going to find options for that. So imagine that you don't have those things and you're just manually putting in these notes. So what's fun is that you're gonna have this keypad appear in the bottom right hand corner. And this is where you're gonna have all these fabulous options of different notes and rests and different kinds of symbols that you might wanna put onto your lead sheet or onto your music that you're making. Now with this, you can rotate between the different notes, right? You can put in a tie, do all of those things manually by going back and forth. I'm gonna insert this and then I'm going to change. I'm gonna add a sharp. I'm gonna do all of those things but it's also gonna be a lot easier for yourself if you have an external keyboard like this one right here. Um, what's nice about this is that my hands are naturally just, I started to memorize where all these things are. If I want a quarter note, oh, that's four, the number four. Um, and you'll learn those shortcuts and it's gonna be a lot quicker for you as you become more familiar with Sibelius and, and with the note input process. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in the notes. So the first note, I'm gonna need a quarter note. So I'm selected here on the quarter note. You can also press the, the number four on your keypad. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on that first pickup. Now I'm gonna go to here and basically just mark in as I go along all these notes, the more I read the 
Hey, okay, now I need a different note. I need a half note. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the half note on my keypad, papers, right? And now I'm gonna have to go back to the quarter note, back to the quarter note. Oh, looks like I made a mistake and that's okay. You can actually go to the up arrow and it'll just move it up to that A instead of that G that I accidentally inserted. And let's continue on with this process. Less, I, calm, Oh, and then I did it again. I actually want that note to be higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the up arrow. Comprehend. And then I'm gonna need a dotted half note. So we're gonna go to that dot on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this process and we'll pick up with the lyrics. You go ahead, pause this video, and I'm gonna fast forward to the rest of the process. Okay, so now this is the first time that we are getting to a note where it's tied. For the word way, we're going to have to tie it to the next bar with another half note. So the way we're going to do that, you can press enter or you can press this, and that's gonna connect whatever the next note is. So there we go. And then this next note, we want it to be an F natural. So Sibelius is automatically going to put it in, but I will show you if you needed it to put in manually yourself, if there's a natural, you're just gonna go right next to the sharp actually. All those accidentals are right next to each other. You're gonna go to the natural and then be selected on whatever note you want that to be on. And then it's gonna go on it. There you go. Okay, so we're about 20 bars through the song and then we have the start where we go, it's very clear, which is ultimately going to need a repeat. The way we do that, we're going to click, see how it's highlighted in purple now, click on the bar and then we're going to go to notations, go to bar line and then that's where the start repeat is going to go. And then you'll do the same thing for when the end repeat happens a little later in the song. You're gonna go through that same process. Let's say it was here, click on the bar, bar line, and repeat. Now let's say you're getting to a different section of the song and you'll want to show that in some way so that it's easier to read and easier to follow. So you might wanna put a double bar line if it's at a new section. So same process there, you're going to go to double and then it creates a double bar line. Let's say you actually change your mind. That's not where you want that to go. You're just gonna select it and then click delete. So you can go ahead and go through the process of putting all the rest of the notes for your lead sheet, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the next process, which is lyrics, and exactly where you want the lyrics to start. You want to click on the note head of where the lyrics are. So that's where the first word is gonna go, the more for that A. So I'm clicked on it and then I'm gonna go to command L. Alternatively, if you're not using the shortcuts, you can go to text. And again, make sure that you're selected on the note where you want the lyric to go. And then go to lyrics, and then you can go to lyrics line one or lyrics line two, which um, right here you can see what that shortcut is. They also have it in there for you. So lyrics line two, that would be if you had like two separate um, verses with different lyrics. So you'll have line one, line two underneath it for the second verse. So for this song, it's just lyrics line one. So let's go ahead and put those in. So I'm gonna put in the more. And in order to get to the next note, the next word is the more, and it's on that C, I'm gonna click the space bar. So the space more, we're gonna go to another space to get to the next note. I read the tricky one now. We have a word that's over two notes. Now, how do we do that? So I'm gonna to go to Command L again, as I lost my place here. Pay, so that's the first part of the word on that first part of the note. You're going to go to the dash, and it's automatically gonna take you to the next note, where the rest of the word is gonna go. Papers, you can just hit space. And look at that, how it cleared the formatting, and now it looks really, really nice. Uh, Sibelius is very smart, so it'll do a lot of the fixing for you. You don't have to worry about it. So I'll go ahead and finish putting those lyrics at another time. But right now, let's put in the next essential part of your lead sheet. You have your notes, you have your lyrics, you need your chords now. So same process as putting in the lyrics. You'll want to be selected on the note that you want the chord to go above. And so I'm selected here because 
the first chord actually doesn't fall on the pickup. It's going to fall on that downbeat for measure one for the word more. So I'm selected here. I'm going to go to command K to put in the chords and I'm going to start typing. Now I've typed in the F6 in order to get to the next beat, you just press space. Now I don't have a chord on the next beat. So I'm going to click space again. I don't have one there space one more time. And I do have a chord on beat four of that first bar. We have that G sharp diminish. And I'm going to go ahead and type out D I M for diminish, but it's going to give that circle um, automatically watch as I click space. Beautiful, isn't it? So it's going to do the formatting for you. You just have to put the abbreviations and it'll understand what those mean and it'll fix that for you. Now the next one, F major seven. And then I'm going to click, um, I'm going to space a couple of times to get to that next beat where I have another chord, which is the F six on beat four, the last D nine. And then I have on comprehend the D diminish seven. And again, it's going to fix that for me and give the little circle symbol. So let's go ahead and fast forward. Okay. Now I have almost a completed lead sheet. It ended up being on two pages just because it has a lot of words and I did include the verse in the lead sheet. And sometimes they don't have the verse, but I like to include the verse for this one. And so I basically went through in terms of the formatting, you want to keep phrases together. You want to keep, um, like, let's say the start of the chorus, it's very clear our love is here to stay. So that should be on one line. Let's say if it ended up landing like this, I'll give you an example. If this were all together and the way I'm going to uh, do this is go to appearance, actually go to layout. And this is going to make it into one system. Let's say if it ended up landing like that on my lead sheet, I don't want it to look like that. I want this to start as a new system because um, it's a new start of a section. So instead I'm going to go to shift and then hold down shift to get to the next bar. So it's selecting all this part, those one, two, three, four bars. And I'm going to make that into a system. And now this is all by itself. <laughs> we wanted to join it, the rest of its friends um, with all these notes. So I'm going to make that into one system here. And now it's back to normal. It looks great. And then um, the same pattern, not for a year. New line, new system. Same thing is happening there. Um, with the first and second endings, the way that I inserted that. So I'm going to go to shift, click to have those two highlighted. And then that's, you'll find that in notations, first ending and then second ending. That's how you're going to put in those. Let's say you only wanted to edit a certain part of this music, for example. So I'm just going to go to shift and I'm going to select all of the music. The way you can grab just an individual part is go to filters in the home uh, tab filters. And let's say I just wanted to edit the text, edit the lyrics specifically. So I'll go to lyrics, see how the only the lyrics are highlighted right now. And then I'll go to text and let's say they were just so big or I wanted them to be very tiny because I wanted it all to fit on one page. So then I can make it 9.5. Um, the way it was is actually just perfect at around 11.5. I normally have it at 10 or 11 point font. And I think that that's just perfect for this, but that, let's say, you want to edit the position of all of the chords at once. We're going to go through that same process shift. Now everything is selected, go to home, go to filters. Let's just go to chord symbols. If I just wanted to move them up, let's say they're running into the notes. So I need to move them up or I wanted to move them down. See how they're all moving all together um, because I'm selected on all of them. So that's a really fun tool to use a handy trick. Now this freely, if I wanted to move that, feel free to move that. You can just click and drag. Now let's say this is my specific key. So I'm going to indicate that somehow I'm going to move up the title and create a subtitle. Um, and the way you do that, you're going to double click here and you're going to go to text subtitle and I'm going to write in Cinderella. 
because that is my key. Now this actually isn't my key, and I'm gonna actually teach you how to transpose the key, speaking up. So we're gonna go to Shift, select all, and we're going to go to Note Input, we're going to go to Transpose, and through this tool, you can transpose by key if you know exactly what key you want it in. So in my final version here, I have it in the key of B flat. That's a good key for me. So I'm gonna put in B flat, but you can also transpose by interval. And let's say I wanted to do up a fourth. Ooh, or let's say down a fourth, let's say down a fourth. And the way you can kind of test it out for yourself, is that a good key for you? You can actually click and just, it's gonna sound the pitches. The world and all its papers. So you can kind of test it out that way. So let's say I actually don't like that key. I wanna go back to my original page here with transpose. And this time I'm going to do it transpose by key. Since I know the key, I want to have it in B flat. With this key, we have a lot of ledger lines. Um, together where we're going a long, long way. It's not too terrible. Some other songs that are, will sit a little bit lower if I change the key even more to a lower key, that would be more of a problem. But even so, with this, it's gonna look better formatting wise and just easier to read if we pop everything up an octave. And if you are a singer, you'll just know that you're not actually singing it up that octave, um, but it's gonna be a lot easier to read and you don't have a bunch of ledger lines that are gonna run into your lyrics or run into your chords. So the way that you can do that is actually just go command up and it's going to completely transpose it up an octave. That looks much better. You have your final lead sheet, almost. Now in the rehearsal process, you're going to want some bar numbers to tell your fellow musicians, let's pick it up from bar 17. Right now we don't have any bar numbers, so I'm gonna go through that process of how you can organize that. Uh, we're gonna go to Shift, Command A, everything is highlighted now. And we're gonna go to Appearance, Engraving Rules, now go to bar numbers, and we'll want every system, um, and that's automatically gonna put them. You can change left align. You want it left aligned um, after the clef, before the clef. I'm gonna go to edit textile, and I like to put a box around my bar numbers just so that it's really clear at the start of every system. Now you might have a different um, way of going about reading your sheet music, but that's what I recommend. So I like to have box. You can also do circled. Make sure that you click this twice, not just once, in order for them to really show up. And beautiful. Now, let's say again, I wanted to move these bar numbers. They're not quite where I want them. And they're running into the staves. The way that you can do that, go to home, go to filter, go to bar numbers, just like we moved the chords. And you can go up or you can go down. And it's just Beautiful. So here you have your final version of your lead sheet. You can go ahead and click file. You can export it, save as, um, export as a PDF. You can put on your iPad. You can you know, print it out and have it just like this in a binder. And you can also save it as a Sibelius file to share with other Sibelius users. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And now I hope that you feel fully equipped and ready to put in those lead sheets into Sibelius. If you have any follow-up questions, any comments for me, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to answer those. And if you have any ideas for future videos, if it's more tech tutorials, let me know. Um, if you have not subscribed already, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications for upcoming videos. I do weekly videos, so make sure that you're subscribed to see those coming up. And if you have not already, like this video. And I hope to see you next time on Sing with Cinderella.